This video is just gonna be about tribal surgical tag pay. What's going on everyone? Welcome to my channel, you guys. My name is Kiafa. Welcome back to all my tribers. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. You guys, let's just hop right into this content. I'm gonna try not to make this video super long. I will be looking down at my notes, so please forgive me if you notice that I am looking down. That's just so we can stay on track. This video is just going to be about tribal surgical tag pay. The regular surgical tag, we would get paid hourly based off of how many hours we work, which is kind of the same for travel, but with travel, you get an hourly rate and you get a travel expense pay as well as a housing allowance. And basically, the travel expense is for you to get to the facility and from the facility. So we'll just say at most places, that's anywhere between $600 to $1,000. So when you looking at your contract, they'll tell you how they're going to break that down. They may give you half up front and then half on your last check. Or they may give it all to you up front or all to you on the back end. That's kind of going to be in your contract. So the travel pay, like I say, is the travel pay is basically for you to get to wherever you're going to be working at. Now, take in mind, it's probably, they're not going to pay you based off of what you spend. They're going to already have a number in place, and that's what they're going to give you. They're going to reimburse it to you. They're not going to give it to you up front. It's going to be a, reimburse, a reimbursement, okay? So that's the first part of being a, a travel surgical tech pay is the travel pay the second part is well another part i would say is the actual hourly rate now this part is taxable so it may be anywhere between 15 dollars an hour to 21 dollars an hour to 30 something dollars an hour it just really depends on how the contract is structured but to make a long story short the hourly rate is what is taxed when you are traveling then you have a housing stipend now this housing stipend is specifically for you to pay for you somewhere to live while you're on this contract now the key here is this money is not taxed this is non-taxable money the key to you having this non-taxable money and to making the most out of your situation is to find housing that is less expensive than how much you're going to be making for your housing basically they look at your housing as an hourly rate so if you get $15 an hour for your hourly rate they'll do it at 40 hours a week so your housing size might be for $15 an hour at 40 um, hours and then the hourly rate could be something like 20 or $30 an hour times 40 hours and then basically they give you that lump sum at the end of the week one it doesn't come in two different checks it all comes on one check and then as you also get what a lot of people don't realize with these travel agencies and these um, staffing companies that you also get the same benefits that you would get if you were at a um, medical facility, a regular hospital surgery center, or a private practice. You still get your um, benefits as far as your medical and dental and vision. You also get a 401k for those who want a 401k. You get a um, tuition reimbursement for most of them. Not only do you get all of that, but I like the part of having like a recruiter that you like a personal advocate type person. So when something go wrong, like you got a personal contact at hospitals, you don't really have that. They'll tell you to go to human resources. Look, I'll never go to human resources about anything I have a problem with I'm going like if it's a problem where I need to go to human resources I feel like I need to go get a lawyer because human resources ain't really for the employees that's more like hospital resources that's what you need to associate with human resources it's hospital resources those people are there to protect the hospital so just remember that you guys I know if we are taught to go tell human resources but trust me when I tell you based off of my experience in the OR I would just get a lawyer and make and have a lawyer talk to me and tell me, you know, is this something that I should pursue or not? Um, outside of going and telling your manager, you can talk to your manager and all of that. But so, ooh, sorry, guys, something flew past me. Sometimes it might be the manager. Sometimes the manager and the owners, you know, the, the managers and the higher ups may be friends. I just don't really even deal with that. Having a recruiter 
because y'all have they have to put so much work in to get you on the assignment that y'all become really close and what i mean by work they have to put work in with you and they gotta put you like get you submitted and all of that stuff and so y'all have a, a better um like rapport and bond than you would with your human resource officer which most of the time you do have to travel out at least 50 miles outside of your permanent resident and you have to be 50 miles outside of that to get the travel pay and yeah it's i mean you get some tax right off some things were tax right off and aren't anymore oh i can give you like an average travel pay from what i've seen actually i can't give you an average but i can tell you a range so the, the ranges that i've seen so far are between i've seen them all the way down to a thousand dollars which you know i don't know what like if you okay so this one was in louisiana and i guess if you was in the neighborhood or the area then you could have took it for a thousand dollars i don't know i just a thousand dollars is regular surgical pay pay so the only difference would be that it would be like a weekly pay and i you know every two weeks or something like that but i've seen it as low as a thousand and i've seen them hit like three almost three thousand dollars a week and the three thousand and those high end ones sometimes it do like they be in like these hella crazy places where nobody wants to go so they paying you a whole bunch of money to be there um or it could be somewhere where it's super expensive to go like hawaii and then you know so <laughs> People don't want to go to places uh, that are super expensive, and then, like I say, if it's a really if it's a high bill rate or like your bring home is really expensive, I normally think that it's if they trying to feel it like immediately, or it's something going on with you know that location to where nobody wants to go there or they can't keep anybody. All right, you guys. So that's all I got for travel surgical tech pay. You have to be certified to be a travel surgical tech at most of these places. Not all of them, but at most of them, a lot of them you do. A lot of the surgical techs that I know that aren't um, certified, they they are getting certified and they want to be certified because it not being certified kind of limits the locations that you can go to. But if you're not certified, it's not a big deal. Just, I mean, it's a big enough deal, but you can still apply and just see what happens. Sometimes they just need people, so you never know what'll happen. Don't, you know, don't let not having your certification stop you from applying to anything because you never know. They may be like, okay, well, you got to have it in six months or something. So, all right, you guys, that's all I got for you on this travel surgical tech pay video. It's pretty decent money, you guys. Like I said, and then, too, you're not working all year if you don't want to work all year like you can decide on if you want to work six months out of the year nine months out of the year or you can say okay this year i'm gonna work 12 months next year i'm gonna work nine months the year after that i'm gonna work six months the year after that i'm gonna work three months and then phase your way out of being an or because this job can really what's the word fund you or help you like pursue other goals because it is a above average pan position like you shouldn't really be struggling um unless you have like money management problems which i totally you know can relate to but i might have some videos on that I, well not might i'm definitely gonna have some videos on how to manage your money if you don't know how to manage your money so anyways i will catch you guys on another video please like share subscribe comment in this video just show me some love you guys because i'll be knowing what y'all be liking and the only way I can know is based on like the views and the likes and comments and get engagement that I'm getting from you guys. So, um, yeah, that's all I got. I will catch you guys on the next video. Thank you for watching. I do love you, and I will catch you on another video.